Richardson is a growing city with a... For any people who have doubts, the Richardson story clearly demonstrates that a problem is being solved. are not excessive, and the benefits are incalculable. We're proud of this plant, and uh, we're proud of the city that we're doing the services for. And just looking at this plant can tell that there, well, there's somebody around here doing something good. Not many people have heard of Richardson, Texas. It's often been overshadowed by a more famous neighbor just to the south. Primarily a residential community, Richardson, because of its location, has undergone a phenomenal expansion, rising from 2,000 in 1950 to over 50,000 today. Fortunately, while Richardson was still a farm community, the city fathers planned for orderly growth. Well-designed home sites, strict zoning codes, architecturally consistent public buildings, pleasant shopping centers, numerous recreational areas, and lots of open spaces. One important bit of preventative medicine they came up with involved water pollution. Everyone realized that expansion required adequate wastewater treatment. The townspeople demanded it, and so in 1953, a wastewater treatment plant was constructed. This is a fine place, I think, to work. I really enjoy working here. Just carried on different here. It's operated different than any other plant I've ever been at. Well, we're, we're kind of like a family down here. We, we know each other, and uh, we work as a team. We do our part of it, I'll say. <laughs> yeah, we, we try to do everything that's necessary to be done here to keep it in first-class shape. A good maintenance program. This is set up on a monthly basis. They check all the equipment. Uh, for greases and oil, and they have a daily inspection that they do this. I think that means a lot in the patient, the operation of the plant is keeping up the equipment. Richardson's wastewater treatment plant is a conventionally designed biological trickling filter. Its capacity, 1.6 million gallons a day. In simple terms, it works like this. As wastewater enters the plant, it flows through a slightly inclined screen. Large floating debris like rags and wood are caught on the screen and mechanically raked off. After screening, the wastewater is pumped into a splitter box where the flow is divided equally among three clear adjusters. The clear adjuster is a combination of two units. A clarifier on top separates solids from the liquid by physical settling. The heavy solids that settle out are deposited in the digester below, where they are treated biologically to reduce the volume of solids. The end products of the digesters are a liquid, called supernatant, which we will talk about in a minute, and a material called digested sludge. After leaving the digesters, the sludge is piped to drying beds nearby. When completely dried, the sludge is used as a fertilizer in city parks or a sanitary landfill. The liquid from the clarifiers reunites briefly before being split once again, this time going into two standard rate trickling filters. The trickling filter is a bed of stones on which organisms grow. 
When wastewater passes over these stones, the organisms consume most of the dissolved organic matter. The cleaner wastewater then trickles to the bottom of the filter. In the final clarifier, the liquid is disinfected with chlorine and remaining solids are removed by settling before the flow is discharged to the receiving stream. While this treatment facility is about 85% efficient for the removal of BOD, it does not remove such nutrients as phosphorus. High nutrient levels in an effluent can stimulate algae growth and this, of course, ultimately leads to eutrophication, or really the death and decay of a body of water. Because it had been operated and maintained so well, the Environmental Protection Agency took a special interest in the Richardson, Texas treatment plant. In 1969, a demonstration project was arranged with the cooperation of the state of Texas. EPA wanted to demonstrate how a conventional treatment plant could be upgraded in treatment performance in a short time, and at minimum cost to remove both additional BOD and suspended solids and also nutrients such as phosphorus. The technique utilized was simple chemical addition to the existing treatment plant. Chemical treatment of this wastewater involves the addition of liquid alum. This chemical precipitates phosphorus, causing the phosphorus, now in solid form, to settle out of the wastewater. The alum can be added either at the head of the plant or before the final clarifier. To discuss another phosphorus problem area, let's back up a little. Along with sludge, the other end product of the digesters is the supernatant, a liquid concentrated with nutrients and organic material. Here, the supernatant is removed from the digesters to three tanks. This flow is treated with an inorganic salt and then air agitated for 20 minutes. To perform the testing required by the EPA demonstration project, a laboratory well-equipped and well-staffed for wastewater evaluation was provided. There are 13 sampling points at various locations along the system. About now the question might be asked, is a project like this worth the effort in time and money? Oh, it certainly is worth it. And I would say to city officials and city managers everywhere who have this sort of a problem, that this is a way to clean up the quality of the effluent from your sewage plants, to do a better job for your people and your neighbors, and it won't cost an unbelievable amount of money. The total construction cost for this was $53,000. And our chemical cost is about five cents per thousand gallons. And we're getting about 90 8% removal of total phosphorus. We think that this will save cities around the world millions and millions of dollars rather than constructing new plants to, to take the place of existing plants that can be modified and the use of these sort of procedures uh, for the benefit of everyone concerned. We've uh, gotten more out of ours uh, besides just phosphorus removal. We're getting suspended solids, BOD, and our final effluent is clear and great. The uh, final clarifier is this is almost a clear spring water. We have drags in the final clarifier, which are eight and a half foot deep. And uh, it, normally at most sewage treatment plants, you never see the, you never see the bars. Uh, but you can see these are visible. We had some government men down here, and we told them what kind of water we was running from the plant here into the stream, and they just couldn't believe it. So To show the quality of our effluent, we installed a fish aquarium and uh, the water going to the aquarium 
is coming out of our final effluent. I've been hearing that they was going to get some fish, but I didn't believe it. I thought they were just kidding us. And uh, anyway, I came down, and sure enough, there was fish in here. And uh, my boss told me, said, there's going to be some important people come down on Tuesday. And these fish better be here alive. I told them they better keep them alive or we're going to kill them. <laughs> but you know those little things, they kept alive. Well, this project has uh, uh, had uh, international significance and drawn this sort of attention to the point that city officials and engineers and uh, government officials from around the world practically have been here to see it. And when they get there, they, they just can't believe their eyes. Wow, really? I mean, when, the, when they come, they just can't believe all the flowers that we have. They just can't understand that it's in the shape that it's in and everything that looks like it does. They can't believe it. Some of them think it's a park down here. And there's no smell here, none whatever. They say it, it's just unbelievable. Well, we've won, um, I think, three awards in the past three years on beautification alone. We've won five or six. We've won them every one since 65. It's nice. I like to work with my hands and uh, get out and garden, keep flowers. It's just real nice. Take a lot of pride in their work, and they do this on their own. They're not told to do the flowers. They do this on their own. And it's not the flowers, it's the way we treat our sewage, and we have no odors. Well, we have a riding stable right close to us here. And we have got some kick here a while back that our plant was smelling. But when they investigated, they found out that it wasn't the plant, it was this stable. So they went to work on the stable and got them to clean it up. Now we've developed this project to the point that when we put our effluent from this plant into the stream, or the stream pollutes it, we're cleaning up the stream. We also are benefiting in another way. We intend, we are now, having some people reuse this water for irrigation purposes. The effluent flows downstream only a short distance before part of it is reused on a golf course and at a cemetery. Its final destination helps supply water to a leisure time recreational center for the area. City officials are already investigating further uses for the effluent to irrigate parks and playgrounds and to serve business establishments for industrial purposes. I think the results of this project have surprised practically everyone who's seen it. The engineers, the water people, and, and all the city officials. It's hard for them to believe that these are the results that are actually happening. To other plant supervisors, uh, to do what we've done here, I think it's worth the time and effort to do it. We really enjoy doing what we're doing. The success of this wastewater treatment plant with its advanced waste treatment additions is more than just a local achievement. In the larger sense, it shows what every community can do to help reduce water pollution. We now have the technology to upgrade conventional biological treatment plants and to remove phosphorus at very reasonable cost. And as this cooperative local, federal, state effort shows, it is really possible to dramatically move ahead in environmental protection.